filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. My life is my own. For official purposes, everyone has a number. Yours is number six. I am not a number. I am a person. It's a one half dozen of another. Is this, is this what they did to you? Is this how they tried to break you? Because they got the book about our that? <laughs> In your heads must still be the remnant of a brain. In your hearts must still be the desire to be a human being again. <laughs> it's the most serious speech of etiquette. In the, one of my videos, I said the Battle of Britain, part two. It's very serious what is happening at the moment in our country. I want you to consider the following. I want you to consider each and every Saturday between now and the six, next six months of 50,000 to 100,000 protesters, demonstrators, marching through cities up and down the country with the Union Jack and the Cross of St. George flying, saying and demanding, enough is enough. I want you to imagine that every Saturday, out on the streets, in all the major cities, people waving the Union Jack and the English flag, saying enough is enough. We do not want any killings in our country. The situation we've got in our country at the moment is that would be totally and wholly unacceptable to the powers that be. It would be absolute taboo for the indigenous people and when i mean indigenous i talk about british people basically marching up and down saying enough is enough this is what and and the police would come out extremely heavy-handed as we know okay don't even bother to talk about two clear policing that's what it is yeah and then politicians are actually denying it No, seriously, you need to think about this. Each and every Saturday, people waving Union Jacks across St. George, even the Welsh flag, Scottish flag, the Irish flag, even the tricolour, waving it, saying, enough is enough. There are people there who will be absolutely livid at us, at us doing that in your own country this is the point I'm trying to make waving your own country's flag is considered immoral think about that think about that okay now I happen, oddly enough, today to actually be in the facility and pass by this memorial. What do those people who are purporting to be anti-racist, anti-P, whatever, what do they make of Lee Rigby's killing? What, what do they think about that? What should we think about that? I mean, this is the way in which Greenwich Council memorialises the horrific murder of one of our own British soldiers. Those poppies were given on remembrance of the British Legion. Okay? The most which the council could do plant a tree 
Yeah. No statue, a tree. So the, yesterday, there was a psycho ops being carried out, presumably by the uh, Cobra meeting, whereby false flags were given out that there were going to be masses. And I'm going to say this in quotes here, far right uh, hooligans and bunks, yeah, who are going to be marching up and down various towns in the country. And lo and behold, yeah, they were anti-fascist, antifa, and uh, all the you know, the usual sort of like muppets coming out on parade. Some have been whipped up by Labour MPs like uh, Stella Creasy. Yeah, why is Stella Creasy taking part in this? She's an MP for God's sakes. What what is it exactly she's taking part in? Right. Because this is misinformation. And so people came out on the streets, apparently, to say that they weren't happy with this. And the media got the photo optics, what they want. It's all about photo op optics, isn't it? Here, Starmer, Yvette Cooper, going up to Southport, laying flowers, like, as though it's Remembrance Sunday. Okay. Um, for the optics, editing out the protests. Right. Anything at the protests and the heckling. Now we've got the optics of the hundreds of you know, tens of cities with anti fascists saying, We don't want you here. It disturbs me how the media have painted normal people, normal people like me, like you, as far right. It's an insult. I think that's what hurts but pretty bad, you know. Okay, I'm an old git, yeah. I remember in the late 70s, I used to be on the streets fighting the National Front, yeah. That's when the National Front, yeah, that was racism. Yeah, that was racism, right? Fighting the National Front. I was a member of the uh, Rock Against Racism with all the different bands in it, X-Ray Specs, the punk band, the Str Stranglers, all sorts, yeah. Okay, Victoria Park. Good, good, do, yeah. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't anti-fascist. I've never even voted conservative in my life. And yet you got these so-called mainstream media calling people far right. As I said, it t shows you that they just aren't listening. And Keir Starmer was asked the question directly: Are you going to get to the bottom of these causes? And all he said was, "Put up, shut up, stay in your lane." There's going to be more and more of the same. I'm not listening. I'm not listening, yeah, to what the people are saying because that's not part of the program. He's not interested. He's literally calling every single concerned patriot of this country a fascist. That's such an insult. It's an insult to the generation who fought in the Second World War against actual fascists. It's an insult to me. It's an insult to you. And all they keep on talking about is, and they keep on saying it like a mantra, you know, like Goebbels. Goebbels says, you know, for propaganda to work effectively, all you need to do is to say a lie, preferably a big lie, and repeat it, loop the loop, keep on repeating it. And sooner or later, it will sink into the psychology of people that that is what it is. Yeah, a big lie. Yeah, I'm not a racist. I'm not fascist. I'm not far right. I believe in my country. I believe in Britain for its faults. Yeah, I believe and I like the culture of the country. I don't like walking around constantly hearing foreign languages in my ear. Not even I'm not even in a tourist spot. I don't, you know, I don't like it. I don't feel comfortable. I'm, I'm there in my own country, walking around, hearing constant foreign languages, seeing things in written languages, seeing people dressed in ways in which I don't really quite understand. Yeah. And uh, people who have habits and customs, which are such that, how can I say, they are alien to me. 
the way in which that translates itself, if you like, is like the general like humour, for example. When you have the same cultural vibes or with different homogeny, uh, you know, humour spreads, yeah, just little things or satire. But if you're in a situation where people don't even speak the language, you're not even getting that. Yeah. Um it really disturbs me. It really, really disturbs me that people are being isolated. To be British now means that you're an enemy of the state. To say that you have a pride in Britain means that you're an enemy of the state. You're called thugs and right wing and they don't want to engage. And forget about the two policemen because. Let me put let me let me put this let me put this succinctly. Yeah, you are the enemy. Yeah, you who love your country, you who love the values or what you thought were the values of your country, you are the enemy. Yeah, you want to preserve British culture. You want to uh, celebrate British culture. You want to feel proud about British culture. You want to enjoy the diversity and, and, and the triumphs of which our fathers fought for. You're the enemy. You're the enemy. Your vote don't count. So you're disenfranchised. People aren't listening to you. Right? We mentioned before how to get listened to. Some other people, some good uh, commentators on the internet, yeah? There needs to be a single petition. Petition for proportional representation. You need to get your voice heard. Yeah, you need to get a petition to get the whole thing discussed in regards to immigration and where it's going, right? The, the main thing which I'm really concerned of, so I'm just going to close this if you like, is how the media have tried to manipulate, they have tried to manipulate the concerns of ordinary British people, right, and turned it into racism. And they've tried to make this whole thing about race. This is what I'm trying to say. They're trying to make the whole thing about race. So people coming out saying, oh, no, 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 we're not racism, we're not dealing with racism. It is not about race. It isn't about race. It's about culture. If you take the word racism out and put culture in it, then you've got a completely different meaning. You've got a completely different meaning about what is going on. This is a culture war. When I say culture war, in inverted commons, uh, com commas, yeah, in, in terms of, but also literally and metaphorically speaking, it's a culture war. Preservation of English, British culture and whether it has dominance and prominence in our lives and in our country. This is what we're saying over, over and above other cultures. This is what it's about, guys. This is what it's about. Really. This is what it's about. Question. How many people have been killed? Or should I say, how many um, Muslim people have been killed by the far right? In the last 25 years. Write that down in the comments. Do your research. Do your research. How many people, how many Muslim people have been killed in Britain by far right extremists? Write it down. Seriously. Sometimes when I'm doing business, I say, look, let's just get down to the pounds, shillings and pence. How many people have been killed by so-called far right or even white, white British people? How many people have, how many Islamic people have been killed by British people? as a result of them being Muslim in the 
the last 25 years. Let's flip that around. How many people, oh, how many people have people, have immigrants or people who have had Islamic fundamentalism you know, in their bones? Or how many Islamic fundamentalists, mad people, if you like, have killed British people in the last 25 years? Yeah. On the left, how many British people have killed Islamic people or Muslim people in the last 25 years? And on the right, write down how many people Islamic fundamental Islamic terrorists have killed in Britain in the last 25 years. Do the research. Forget the bullshit. All this sort of like against racism, this and that. It's not about racism. Yeah, it's about culture wars. And I think you'll see that there is very few. I think I can't, you know, maybe on one hand, maybe. I don't I don't even think there are five Muslim people who have been killed because they are Muslim yeah, by white people. By British people. Full stop. I think that uh, there's been a lot more deaths, yeah, by Islamic fundamentalists against British people, yeah, over the last 25 years than the other way around. So who is Zooming who Yeah, Who is Zooming who? Because that is the concern I have when the politicians are making their own citizens the enemy. What's going down? Doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't make sense. And don't make it about race. Don't go there because it's not about race. And the people who have been protesting in, in regards to enough is enough, it hasn't been about race. Never been about race. The only people who've been making it about race is the mass media. The, that's the only people. Only people. And when they talk about things like, say, uh, Nigel Farage, Robinson, uh, you know, they don't really talk about anything specific about what they've said. Always skirt around the issue. They don't want a head to head. They don't go to people. Don't you know um, Machiavelli, um, that philosopher who was like the king's advisor, the prince advisor, saying you know uh, very, very, very many, many people see, but very few people touch and feel. Yeah. Many people see and listen to the soundbite, but very few people put their head under the bonnet and work out the facts. Likewise, I think one of his uh, chapters was whether it's better to be loved or feared by the people. Well, Starmer is going by the latter. He knows that the people don't love him. So he's going on the fear side of it. In all honesty. It's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a lot, lot worse. Yeah? Unless we do something to change it. Within the system, it's, it's quite easy to do. But what you need is coordination. Yeah? Proportional representation. Seriously. You can have the discussions about immigration, but no one wants to even talk about it. So you've got to go straight for the jugular. Portion of representation, then your MP vote counts, then people can start doing stuff, start making proper changes. At the moment, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the dialogue of the deaf. You know, it's the dialogue of the deaf because you know, don't worry about two tier policing, don't worry about the causes of what's going down, 
they're not listening and they're just branding everybody as far right and trying to scare the shit out of people. Yeah. So they, they their voice is muzzled and it's got nothing to do with far right. It's a fucking imaginary. You know, it's like it's, we keep talking about this book, don't we? 1984. It's got to be compulsory reading, really. But yeah, it reminds me of Goldstein's fucking underground fucking movement. Remember that? 1984? Goldstein's underground movement. The secret movement was trying to overthrow the government. Yeah, that's the fucking far right. It's just fucking make believe. Yeah, created by the frigging government. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, that's all I've got to say. Uh, it's uh, over and out, really, over and out for me.